Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Jira for Beginners and Intermediate tutorial, we are going to continue where we left in the last tutorial. So we have covered up to creating a subtask in Jira and what exactly is subtask, right? So let's move further about how to create a product backlog, what is sprint, creating a sprint, etc. Okay. So before we go ahead and see how to create a product backlog, first thing we need to understand is what is product backlog, right? Briefly, I have touched based in the first tutorial itself. So product backlog is the set of epics and then user story or the, all the work item that needs to be done as part of the project in order to build something right in order to build an application a software or an app okay so that list of work item is the product backlog and when we say Jira in Jira how we can correlate that uh, the product backlog uh, so simply we have been working actually with the backlog already so if you go to the projects here okay let me maximize it okay so in the left hand side you have the backlog right so this is basically what the product backlog or the product backlog of scrum correlates within the Jira as so if you click on the backlog all the work item that you see here in the backlog section is the product backlog okay and how you are going to create the product backlog so simply if we see by default you will see the versions and epic if you click on epics it will open the list of epic right that are created already in this particular backlog okay so any work item that will be added here is the product backlog all right anything that you see in the backlog is the product backlog so how to create the product backlog now we have understood that epic is the high level work item the user story you can say or the work item that will span multiple sprints it Will con it can contain multiple user stories within a particular epic right for example if we go to lead man management you will see there are two stories right so there could be tens and 15 and 20 stories depending on how complex the epic is all about then contact management has some user story so in order to create the product backlog it's absolutely simple you first have to create the epic and then within the epic you create the user stories and then you elaborate user stories so that's all the work of so basically define or articulating the user story providing the requirement is the responsibility of the product owner and most of the time product owner might also be creating these user stories they might not be elaborating it a lot that might be done by the business analyst but then business analyst work very closely with the product owner to get all the detailed requirement from the product owner so product owner responsibility is to articulate all of the epics that are required to be built because product owner is the face of the customer customer and they interact with the tech team and the customer so they know what needs to be built and delivered then in between business analysts might be working closely with the product owner and they'll be articulating these user stories and the scenarios within the user stories okay so to create a product backlog so for example product owner articulates that these might be the epics okay uh, in in the project uh, that we need to build so those epics say for example we have the list here right so say for example account management so the product owner will say go ahead and create the account management epic provide some summary and the details accordingly and they'll create the epics accordingly okay so account management has been created so this is how they are going to create the product backlog okay then I'll create a deal management so create another epic and say deal management now in the real scenario there will be a much better summary all the details descriptions will be in much better shape okay but this is just to show you that basically this is how they are going to do right so you'll see that these are the four epics that have been created and this is all the product backlog now within this account management uh, the business analyst or the product owner themselves will go ahead and create the user stories within it right so they'll go ahead and they'll add the user story so for example this story will get created there in the deal management right so i'll say create issue and then create a story for the deal management similarly for the account management let's go ahead and create a story for the account management. okay so this is how if you see clear all filters and i'll minimize this this is how your backlog will look like okay this is so it will be a list of work items or the stories and the task whatever tasks say for example needs to be created there could be some defects as well right so say for example in first sprint the defect got created there are some defects but then the team decided they are not very critical defect and they are 
are a low severity we can fix them later right so they are deferred so those defects can also be present here in the backlog right so that is all whatever work item needs to be done whether it's it's the upfront work as part of the user story or the defects that are raised across the sprints or during the sprint and are moved back to the backlog and not immediately fixed within the sprint is all part of the product backlog okay so here i can say deal management display defect just any name okay so you'll see this work item this defect is also there part of the backlog right now this is what the product backlog is within jira okay now what is next so after the product backlog what exactly is sprint now sprint is two to four weeks iteration time box iteration okay so in scrum because scrum is incremental and iterative development approach framework so the teams follow two to four week cycle mostly two weeks is standard across the industry most of the companies and projects will follow some places i have seen three weeks being followed as well but two weeks is pretty standard that team will pick certain items work items from the product backlog say for example these two stories will go ahead and build in the next two weeks in one next sprint which is say for example two week cycle so they'll pick these work items and they'll start working on that so the team will be of three to nine people scrum it's not very big team it's the max is like nine people team and they will start building this these two user stories and this is what the sprint backlog is okay so sprint is the time box iteration the duration and the sprint backlog is the work item that is being picked up from the product backlog from this backlog and moved into the sprint the work that the team will be doing okay so if we go to the next so sprint is the iteration the time box iteration and then how to create a sprint backlog uh, the first thing is we have to how to create a sprint right so this this item we need to create first so how to create a sprint is the first thing so sprint will be created mostly by the scrum master because scrum master will be managing all of the sprint and other related activities so this whole backlog product owner will be working very closely with the business analyst to see what all back log items are there uh, whether they are refined whether they are having the relevant details or not um, that will be product owner but then sprint creation and sprint backlog all of that will be mostly closely worked with the scrum master so to create a sprint you'll see this create sprint button right so if i click on create sprint you'll see automatically a sprint has been created okay zcsp sprint one okay now if i want to edit it right so i can click on these three ellipses here and click on edit sprint and i can edit the sprint name okay i can edit the start date end date and the sprint goal okay so sprint goal say for example it is a plain english um, goal that you want to set right so writing in in a statement english statement that yes we want to achieve we want to build the deal management upload functionality as part of this sprint so all the related user stories for deal management upload functionality need to be built so something like that that's the sprint goal so this is how you are going to edit now the sprint has been created i am not going to uh, update anything now this once the sprint is created the next thing is how to create the sprint backlog now sprint backlog as we have understood as part of the scrum is picking the work item from the product backlog and moving them to the sprint backlog right so now we know that there are there are these are the work items that are there in the sprint backlog uh, sorry the product backlog now as part of the sprint planning meeting what the team will do is so the whole development team scrum master and product owner they will be meeting together prior to as soon as the sprint starts that's the first meeting that happens the planning sprint planning so this list that you see in the product backlog this is prioritized by the product owner so any work item that you see on the top say for example the product owner will say uh, this contact management is the highest priority this needs to be built first so they will prioritize this accordingly and the items that are there on the backlog at the top and then second third accordingly the team will pick them up okay so this ideally needs to happen but whether it is happening in your project or not that's 
not sure right it might be possible that uh, the product owner will say no we need to build this account management first i haven't prioritized it uh, but uh, this is the high priority for the next sprint right but ideally this should be actually if if this is high priority they should be moving it to the first number so in case the team is not sure they basically can go ahead and start picking up from first second third accordingly for the sprint work so this say for example is prioritized by the product owner already now in the sprint planning meeting the team will go ahead okay this is the priority item we need to go ahead and pick it okay so pick it and move to where move to sprint to build this particular work item in the next sprint now say for example there are there there is so the team will go ahead and then move it to the sprint okay so scrum master will go ahead and move it in the sprint and then they will also associate the story point so basically story points is the estimation you can think right so and and in scrum it is more of more modified Fibonacci series it's not a real Fibonacci series it's modified Fibonacci so uh, the story points are the number of points you can say effort uh, that is being provided to these user story and depending on the user story points uh, or the and the capacity of the team how much work item the team can pick up those many user stories are being then picked up so for example we also picked the team also picked contact management and then there is one story for the lead management also picked up okay and now team size can only and these all three stories are big so there they, these all are say for example big stories and that will require minimum uh, sort of a sprint to implement for two people in the team and there are three people or uh, six people in the team right so it's kind of all of them are occupied with these three user stories so as soon as that uh, capacity is being occupied uh, and there is no more capacity of the members to actually work on more items this is what the team is going to go ahead and build right so this now has became the sprint backlog right so we have moved these items so the team has basically picked up the high priority items that are prioritized by the product owner into the sprint and this is what the sprint backlog is all about the items that are there moved into the sprint are uh, is the sprint backlog okay now the team will go ahead and discuss these stories in the sprint planning meeting they go ahead discuss they see the acceptance criteria what all needs to be built they provide the story points say for example this is a uh, big, big user story 30 story points 13 story points sorry and then similarly this is also very big um, story will say for example this is eight story points so scrum master will go ahead and provide eight story point and this is all discussion that happens and everyone comes to an agreement that yes this is kind of a eight story story point and how this happens basically poker planning happens within sprint so which which i'll cover uh, sometime later in in terms of poker planning it's more of a um, everyone in the team has their say that based on their understanding about the requirement this might be a 13 pointer or 8 pointer right so that's what happens in the sprint planning and then everybody comes to a consensus that yes this is basically a complex story and will require uh, say for example 13 points and then the points are updated accordingly okay on the user story now once the points are updated right once the points are updated on the user stories then the team will again go ahead and discuss more details what all tasks need what all sub tasks need to be there right so what is there any design work that needs to happen who will do, do that design in the team what who is going to do the development what development activities what tasks need to be there is there any test case design activity that needs to happen who, who will be doing a test execution so all those sub tasks will then created within these user stories as well right Right, in as part of the sprint planning itself okay so that those things will also happen during the sprint planning or just after the sprint planning but all the clarity that is required for the whole team in order to build these user stories will happen then and there within the sprint planning okay so once that is all done the sprint backlog is ready so we have created the sprint the scrum master has created the sprint and they have also created the sprint backlog okay so this is our sprint and the sprint backlog now how to start the sprint so creation of the sprint backlog creation of the sprint has happened we have created the sprint backlog now how to start the sprint it's pretty simple starting the sprint for the scrum master it's simply click off the 
button here start sprint when we say start sprint right so if we click on start sprint you will see that it will by default choose whatever issues have been picked up in the sprint three issues have been added right this is the sprint backlog and then the sprint name the custom duration basically you will see that it will start from 19th of september today and end after two weeks okay if there are you know holidays in between accordingly then that's that many days will be basically reduced from the sprint or that that's the capacity reduction right because there will be holidays in between so this is kind of two weeks custom sprint which is 10 working days in this sprint okay and then the scrum master will go ahead and say start so this will start the sprint and as soon as the sprint has started you will see that this sprint will now appear in the active sprint the next after the backlog in the backlog all the backlog items are there right all the stories and everything whichever details are there in the backlog and then this is the sprint right so in the active sprint you will see that the work item or the stories that we have added are there in the sprint here in Tudo column okay so this is how the scrum master is going to start a sprint all right now what happens during the sprint right another imp important aspect to understand what happens during the sprint okay so once the sprint has started now the team will go ahead and start working on these work items right so say for example this particular work item this is the story so whosoever will be responsible within the team for designing right so the, that person will go ahead and this task will be assigned to that particular person right so say for example as of now there is no other user so i'll just assign it to myself and then that person will go ahead and start working on this they'll as say for example this is day one they'll put some description there what all needs to be done okay and then as they progress day by day they will go ahead and put the comments right so say for example okay design in progress and if there is, there is anything that has been done that has been progressed accordingly they will put the comment so everyone is aware and a transparency is there right then they'll go ahead and basically they'll move in in progress if they have started working they'll put the comment and then during the sprint there will be scrum meetings right which is daily stand-ups so everyone will be coming together and they'll be say for example designer or the architect will they'll be discussing yes i'm working on the design of this story and uh, i progress this much and uh, most probably by tomorrow or day after i'll be finishing this okay or uh, the, i'm working on this um today i'll be working um uh, yesterday i worked on this uh, today i'm working on this and then uh, there are no blockers accordingly so this is how the work items will basically go ahead and progress so testers for example is designing the test cases they'll move this task in the, into the test design and then once the work items are progressed okay so say for example a couple of days have passed daily stand-ups will happen every day same place same time to avoid confusion and then the team as they'll progress if for example testers have created the test design for uh, this particular user story they'll move this to this subtask to done right and then if the build is basically the development has been uh, completed uh, then the development or uh, the, sorry the design and development has been completed that will also be moved to done okay and then the test execution basically will start okay so so this is how so other people so developers will be moving this task test case design will be the person who is testing it and then design will be by the test architect or the the solution architect etc uh, the test execution will be done and if everything is all good then this task will be closed and the story will be moved to done as well okay but in case there are issues defects the defects will be raised and those defects need to be fixed and that will also progress through this particular board okay so this is usually what will happen happen during the sprint that the work items will basically progress from start to finish there will be daily stand-ups and the meetings that will make sure that the work is progressing as expected once everything is done once the sprint is complete right so once say all of the work item has been complete or 10 days have passed then the sprint needs to get completed right so what will happen once the time has passed because it's time boxed right so as soon as the time will get over so during the sprint we know that the work will be done it will be progressed to to done state as and when team progresses and then after 10 days there will be 
sprint review right so there will be some working increment or the product increment the working code that needs to be showcased so there will be sprint review meeting okay wherein stakeholders customers whosoever needs to be involved will be there and showcased will be done or demo of the product will be done okay if there is something to demo and then uh, the sprint will be closed by the sprint uh, scrum master right so how the sprint is closed so sprint will be closed by simply clicking on this complete sprint if i click on complete sprint now because the sprint just started okay so you'll see that none of the issues were done okay this this message will be appearing because all of the issues are just added i haven't moved them to done say for example let's say let's complete this one okay so this has been completed so as soon as all the subtask has been completed you will see that update parent issue to done as well we'll say update to done so this issue has been or this story has been completed okay now if you'll see that one issue was done and two are incomplete now if this is the scenario this is the scenario many times and most of the times there are some issues some um, stories that are not completely done so they'll be basically moved to next sprint right so this is what the what happens usually so either they will be moved to the backlog here or move to the new sprint mostly they are moved to the new sprint by the scrum master so to complete the sprint click on complete sprint and then move to new sprint and click on complete right and then this sprint will get closed zcsp sprint one will get closed right so you'll see that this is how the chart the burn down chart will look like okay now burn down chart is something say for example what how many points user story points we had picked up to be built in the two weeks right so ideally as and when the work will progress you will see in the first sprint itself in the first day itself we have picked up the work item and then we have closed one user story immediately you will see this line coming down so all those work uh, those story points have been closed right so that's why this has moved here but usually as and day progresses this burn down chart will move further and then the ideal way or the real scenario you will see that october 4 is where the sprint will get closed by the scrum master okay but to show you the how the sprint is going to be closed it's just a close sprint button okay and that will help you to close the sprint okay so now if you go to the active sprint you will see no active sprints are there if you go to the backlog you will see that we have the next sprint got created sprint 2 wherein the two issues that were not completed are being available here right they have been moved from sprint 1 to sprint 2 okay now what will happen after the sprint 1 has been finished or previous sprint has been finished right so which is the last topic here so how to close the sprint in jira we have understood that now what happens after sprint is closed okay so now after sprint has been closed the previous work items if everything has been done in sprint one okay so for example no issues have been moved to the sprint two then the team will again come together in the next sprint day one they will again discuss the product backlog item they'll move these backlog item into the sprint right that we need to build these items now if there are few items from the previous sprint as a for example in this case these two were not completely done so they are moved here so accordingly whatever will be the capacity of the team they will be picking up in the sprint planning again here following the same process again starting sprint working on the work item in the sprint two daily stand up sprint review retrospective etc and then closing the sprint so this keeps going on unless all the work item in the backlog are completed and the customer is satisfied with what they are looking for so this is how the scrum actually works and the correlation of scrum within jira okay so this is briefly about the jira basics all of the core components of jira how you use jira for scrum okay and also the sprint planning the sprint backlog etc what happens within the sprint uh, during the sprint what happens after the sprint etc so that's all about the basic and intermediate part of the jira basics and scrum usage within jira so i hope this was helpful for you please do uh, share and subscribe thank you very much for watching